What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 23 of the In Control Gaming Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Ole, and joining me, as usual, my fellow co-host, PK. How's it going, man? Hello, everybody. Yeah, what's no, going on, brother? No, it's going good, man. It's going good. Of course, we got Michael. Nice to be back, man. Good to be back. Nice good to gang. be back. It's the gang. And of course, we got Alan. He's a little sick. He's behind camera. Um... So yeah, hashtag get well soon, <laughs> get well soon Alan. Uh, this is a very actually special episode because it is our annual yep. Game of the Year podcast. So we're going to be doing battle over what games we thought were the best of 2019. Mm. You guys ready for that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're switching things up a bit this year. We thought we would also include some individual category awards. So everybody is going to come up with their own individual category uh, and give an award based on that. So... You know, without further ado, I think we can jump straight in. Patrick, why don't yep. you tell us what your category is? Uh, my category is the best category in the in the world of video gaming right now. Gas games. Gas games. Everybody's favorite. Everybody gas games. loves gas games. Games as a service. So um, yeah, I played um, I played all the games on my list except uh, one. So um, how many are we supposed to mention first of all before I dive straight? Uh, as many. Well. I get, uh, you pick, you pick the one you think is the one, but you can you say can mention, you can yeah. say several, and then you, you pick, pick the your one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, where? This is a uh, done edited life, guys. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then uh, what I'll say is um, say your one. I can say. Okay, yeah. this is the list that I came up with. Okay. First on the list was Final Fantasy fourteen. Um, constant updates, great game all around, and it's continued to improve. Uh, I also wrote down Red Dead Redemption 2 online, I wrote down uh, Battlefield 5 and Star Wars, um, oh yeah, Star Wars Battlefield 2. Battlefront. Battlefront, sorry. <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront 2. And there was an honorable mention of one of the worst, uh, biggest disappointments was Ghost Trick on Breakpoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so why um so which is your award going to and why? Um I think it's going to go to Final Fantasy fourteen simply because of the consistency. Mm -hmm. The consistency and um the story just continuously captivated me. There were times where I fell off because of the continuous fetch quests, but then once you get behind that and once you continue to develop your character and your role, I think that it is still one of the top, the top. online games running for a very, very long time. And yeah, I will You're always respect that. You're gonna have to excuse me real quick, sorry guys. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. And then, uh, so, yeah, I think Final Fantasy XIV is That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. And they had, they, didn't they drop Shadowbringers as well? Yeah, Shadowbringers dropped. I haven't got into there yet. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're yeah, still playing yeah, like the yeah, story yeah, stuff yeah, before yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm still going through it. It's but uh, it is. <laughs> it is uh, very long. Um, it's longer than I anticipated. Because uh, it was obviously the... It was one of the first games where I really dove or dived in. Yeah. That was an online RPG, mm -hmm. and I really just wanted to take a huge chunk out of it, and I really enjoyed it, and, but it was amazingly long. But the fact of the matter is that it stayed relevant in the world of gas games, and the quality is still really good. So, yeah, i definitely give the award to that. I think that's fair. Yeah. Looking yeah. at all the other games, I mean, BF5, no redemption story for you. Oh, <laughs> no redemption BF, story BF5. for you. Yeah, because yeah. It's, it's, considering we're talking about gas games, let's have a little BF5 yeah. moment real yeah. quick. Yeah. Everything was was on fire at the start of last year, January this time last year, and as we went through the year, more problems, not enough maps, not right. enough weapons, and then everything changed in November when they dropped the Pacific Theater of War. We got Iwo Jima, uh, we got, um, I'm forgetting the name of the other map, we got just major bug fixes. It was looking good, right? That's when we were having the most we fun of the game. Were on the right. Path. Exactly, yeah. We needed more maps, which they said they were giving to yeah. us, and we needed bug fixes, which they continuously yeah. fixed yeah. bit by bit in every update. And why change the formula when you finally yeah. got back on the road? The key thing is the gunplay was absolutely perfect. Yeah. The gunplay was in such a great place, and then what do they do just before Christmas? They release another patch that completely changes the time to kill, it breaks the game, and then dice the go off on holiday, you know what I mean, during Christmas, and the community's left picking up the pieces yeah. with a game that they've 
tried to build up, they take things back, and it's just been a nightmare since I, that point. It, 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 it's amazing how they didn't realize what they had. The game was on the right track, yeah, and it was tricky, but not it. Yeah, like we said before, it required a level of mastery for you to actually kill a lot of people yeah. in Battlefield. You, you build but up, yeah. This now memory. with the auto assist and all these, ah, the TTK, oh, it's Disaster. bad move. Disaster. Bad move. I haven't turned that game on in two months. You know, I, mean? I haven't updated yeah. it in about two, three months. Anyway, yeah. that's your our Battlefield Five update. There'll be another one probably <laughs> in the next episode. <laughs> Let's move on to the next uh, category, Alan. Uh, why don't you go ahead you from behind the camera? Okay, my category is the best gaming trends in 2019. So we've seen a lot of impressive games come out, uh, different types of you know thought processes in terms of how games are released, the quality of the games, the budgets that go into them. We've seen a lot of impressive indie games, mm. kind of showing that you know you don't need to be a AAA studio to produce good quality. Uh, for that reason, that is my honorable mention. But I think I'm going to cheat a little bit and give a little bit of a vague answer as to what I think is the best gaming trend, and that is that developers seem to be understanding why we as fans fell in love with their game series in the first place. What I mean by that is, we have seen some fantastic sequels that have come out of nowhere, and we have seen some great game remakes. Now, true. So, you can look at Devil May Cry 5, which is a game that we never thought we'd see the light of day, some classic Dante, some classic Nero, boom, Capcom, come and hit us with that beauty. Monster Hunter, for me, as I said uh, in the previous game of the year, it was my favorite game of 2018, they've kept that trend up with their expansion, which is almost a game in and unto itself. And honestly, one of the best games in the year is Resident Evil 2. How they made this game feel so modern day, but so faithful to the classic, so faithful to the PlayStation 1 era as a whole. You know, I think Capcom really got the ball rolling when they uh, recreated the direction of Resident Evil 7. But, you know, being a first-person game, less emphasis on weapons, I think it was just a different direction. But Resident Evil 2 is just a perfect blend of what was PlayStation 1 and what is PlayStation 4 and beyond. You finished Resident Evil 2? I finished it with both campaigns. And you didn't shit yourself? Many times. <laughs> <laughs> many, many times. You but it wasn't worth it. Oh my days, you, you just want to stop. But it's just so good. And it kind of sounds like I'm giving, you know, just a lot of praise specifically just to Capcom. But, you know, obviously they seem to be doing the right year. things. Yeah. They've had a very good year. We've seen, you know, quite a few other developers looking to remake games. We've seen the re-release of the classic Zelda game on Switch, you know, brand new graphics. But at the heart of it, they're always keeping true to what made these games great in the first place. Yeah. There's that little bit of revolution, but that faithfulness, that's enough that... It keeps new players and old players alike just wanting to go back in, wanting to spend that money. And it looks like we're going to see some new great things in 2020 as well. Yeah, I'm sure. sure. We can yeah, FM7, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can go into that in, an, in another episode. Don't get me hot and bothered. <laughs> <laughs> but it just seems to be something that people seem to be getting right. And I'm very, very impressed with that and very happy with it. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so moving on to my category, I am proposing. Best style. Best style. Best style, that's with four Ys. Um, mm -hmm. So this is basically like games which I thought had like the coolest looking art style, coolest looking character designs, coolest looking menus, that sort of thing that are just visually very appealing. Uh, I guess you could fold a bit of music into this as well. So it's uh, just a few games that I thought uh, had the best style. Uh, first one, DMC5. Uh, I think everybody here would probably agree with that. It's very flashy. Uh, a lot of the uh, animations, a lot of the way uh, the characters, you know, use their weaponry and that sort of thing. It's How's just the menu of music? really cool. Uh, the music is, it's Devil May Cry music. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. the typical, Is you know, it's just the rock in the back. Yeah. I don't think it's anything too great. The menus are fine for what they are as well. Nothing too crazy. Uh, second game is an indie game that I really enjoyed called Observation. Um, the reason I am putting this, I really think this game had a cool style is because in this game you're controlling an onboard AI on a space station and uh, you have to interact with this one character, this astronaut on the ship, doesn't know what's happened and everything and you have to solve these puzzles but the way the puzzles are made are like 
kind of like computer interface that change depending on what you do, whether it's bringing communication systems online, whether it's getting unlocking the airlock system, like it's very tactile. So you like actually have to be like turning knobs and moving uh, things around, making things align. It's very clever the way they did it. So I thought that style was amazing. Third game was uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. I think this <laughs> I think this game just has a beautiful, like almost Pixar-like art style and everything. Uh, the mansion, the way it's designed, it's very, it's got different themes depending on what floor of the mansion that you're on and stuff like that. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Th uh, fourth game, I've only played this for a few hours, but is Judgment, which is a spin-off from the Yakuza games. Um, this style is it's the Yakuza style, so I'm cheating a bit. You guys all know the Yakuza style. I Yakuza. Like, oh, it it years ago. Ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you know, Yakuza has all the style to it. But it's got a nice little uh it's got a detective spin on the style as well as the, it's got really cool jazz instrumental music that's playing through it that adds to the detective aspects, which is really cool. Then the last game is Death Stranding. I mean that game is all style, you know what I mean? Character designs, the world, the equipment, your weaponry. Is just all really, really well done. The menus as well are, are very MGS5, which I really appreciate. Um, that little blip every yeah, time you click. Exactly, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even the little sounds. Also, a shout out to the likes every at the end of every delivery. There's yeah. like this little sound saying like, like to like all the stuff that you've done is really cool. So I thought it was really dope. But I am going to give it two observation. Only because I really think the way they integrated the puzzles, uh, the way they're so like tactile, the way you have to, it's 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 weird. I mean, I wish those footage, or I hope this footage over this, so it's it's, it's better articulated. But I think observation, just the the presentation, um, the style of the menus that you're constantly in is just uh, really really well done, especially coming from a small team. So yeah, I'll give it to observation. Nice. I've got to throw one out out there as well. I haven't played too much of it, but just on that one, two hours that I did was absolutely surreal, and that's going to be Control. Oh yeah, Control. Yeah, control. Oh sorry, I, I Control is also in this. Oh, I forgot to include Control, I had it on my list. Oh, yes, yeah. Control as I well has an amazing style. Yes, yes, yes. That is style. <laughs> that is proper style. When the text just appears when you enter a new room and just go boom and it just it's the red so colors you know, red colors they yeah, are the the wisps and the, the the particle effects and stuff it's yeah really cool. it's really dope yeah uh michael so round off categories uh, yeah i mean that was also a really dope list i was also thinking like maybe a, a slight mention i don't think it'll make it to the top of that list but like just call this in for me. oh yeah 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 that game is a really cool yeah. style yeah yeah um for me my category is the biggest disappointment, okay? Now, we had disappointments last year. Uh, we had Anthem. Oh, Anthem, was, last year, Anthem was last year, right? Oh my God. But you see, oh, yeah, this is yeah, what yeah. my point about Anthem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> it's, it was such a disappointment that it's not even disappointing enough to disappoint me enough to be the top of the list. Because <laughs> you even forget that it's so bad that it couldn't make it on the back. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's just useless. Like, the, the, the planning, um, the, the launch, the, the, launch the visual downgrade, which is something I want to talk about in a future episode. Like, the last gen, the trend of always having these visually downgraded games from E3 or whatever, and it's like, wow, you see what the potential of the game is, then you play it, and some games are like, yeah. is this the same? Some of those th some of those aren't even like really vertical slices, though, yeah. that's the thing. It's like they're making something that they know is not real. Yeah. In the case of Anthem, they all knew, like, when that E3 trailer happened, people at Bioware were like, that's the game we're making? <laughs> it was never even real, you know? And you know, and the, just the visual side of things for me, like, I, I don't like that when, when that happens a lot. And the, the, the issue is that you run a game on PC when you're showing it, and then you downgrade it for console. You downgrade you know, it. Just show what the console version looks like. Even mm. even exclusives, yeah? Mm. Even PlayStation mm. exclusives. Mm. You know, they, they'll run it on, an, on a PC. Mm. And they're like, you know, this was running. I'm like, bruh, show us what it will it's, it's better what it'll look to like. the more realistic reference. So our expectations are level. Because for me, the biggest thing about Anthem, when I saw it, was not just to say, I, have, I love this type of game, you know, I want to play this. No, because I don't play it like Destiny or whatever. But the way it looked, I was like, wow. Like, the water, the, the, when, you, when you go into the air and in the water and the, 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 the graphics. Remember that thing falling over, the big guy. Yeah, so for water, me, I, I think like, going into the next gen, guys, just be a bit more mindful. Show stuff that's a bit more close to what your game is. Because we will criticize it that way. Mm -hmm. Talking about games like um, the first Watch Dogs. 
when we so, that yeah, it, it, it always and feels then you like play the game and you're like, did I buy the right game? Yeah. It always I mean? feels like they've painted just one room of the house yeah. just for you to <laughs> yeah, have yeah, yeah. And because when they're forced to release that gameplay footage, the game is pretty much patched together for that video. Yeah. So it can't even run. That's like, but it's even running on the console. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for me, disappointing game. Anthem. However, that is not the biggest Mm. Disappointment. Fallout didn't come out last year. <laughs> <laughs> for me, the biggest disappointment for 2019 is for the following reasons. This game had a huge expectation as compared to Anthem. Anthem, people were, we were very hyped, but we were like, you know, let's see. It's by the way, but we just saw Andromeda and so on. So let's, yeah. let's see what's there. But this game, the expectation was at 10. The 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 history the development was like okay this is going to be this is this is game of the year yeah. candidate like straight up like what else is coming it's a loaded year but let's see what's there mm -hmm. but for me the fact that this game and I have seen everything about this game story played whatever Death Stranding for me was the biggest disappointment oh that's a that's, that's, Death that's Stranding a, that's a ballsy pick. was <laughs> Disappointing because visually, if we talk about like Anthem, for example, yeah, visually they kept it true to what we saw. Mm -hmm. That game is remarkable, like visually, like the graphics, as a beast. it engine. looks amazing, and that's what I'm saying. That's why I can praise it. I'm like, yo, this was what we expected to see. But why this was disappointing is that you know, the way it was rolled out, we've seen this game for the last three years before it came out, like trailers and whatever, and there's mystery. To the point that we all started trying to come up with our own theories. No, this must be a tie-in to MGS. This person must be here, whatever, whatever. What MGS? Yeah, like, you know, when, when we were seeing, like, uh, the first time we saw Mads uh, with the tanks and everything. We're going a bit too crazy for that. Already the tanks for MGS. <laughs> because that's Kojima, man. He always has funny, like, even when you when we played, uh, was it Ground Zeroes? Yeah, remember Ground Zeroes? There's yeah. a part where he's literally tying in. He was in the game to show. Yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So... The build up to this game coming up is like this guy has the freedom now to create a game and it looks amazing. It looks confusing, yeah. but we're used to him confusing us, and then it's like, oh snap! That's why there were so many suspicions. Like, okay, who are the bodies up there? There was ties to like, was is there any question to Silent Hills, whatever? We were like, yo, this game, when we get it, it will finally make sense because. There's also that thing of Kojima where you think he's trolling. He's like, he likes to troll, mm -hmm. troll us. Mm -hmm. So like, no, he's trolling us by some of the things he's showing us. Like, I get that we're peeing, but nah, there's, there's something else to it, like when we play the game. This game, as a game, was so underwhelming, especially from the developer that made it, the expectation, the history they have. Even we've had multiple arguments in the past about Metal Gear Solid games or whatever. And but one do. thing, yeah, but one thing we, we've, we've never disagreed on is that they play well. You mm. enjoy playing the Feels game. MGS5, yeah, 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 and MGS5, as much as we do, we might not like the story that I didn't like. Oh, MGS5 is one of the best shooting mechanics yeah. I've yeah. ever yeah. played. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, you play the game. Yeah. Yeah. But this game, gameplay was so lacking, not just because of like negligence, but like there were so many speed humps put in the game that for me are like generationally bad. Like just the to fast travel in that game, the steps that you have to take to do such a normal mundane thing. And I get if you're trying to make the game feel more stretched out, yeah, yeah. but it's like, yo, the game is not, um, it's not good. Like, why do I have to go, fun. Yeah, why should I go through six I things? That's the key thing, fun. Fun, what? yeah, the game. Can I ask a question? You haven't played it, right? No, I haven't played it. Okay. Mm. But if you, if you go through six things just to do one thing, and then the music, first of all, the music of that game, amazing. Mm -hmm. I've heard the soundtrack, I've seen, like I've watched the, like playthroughs and everything, and when you see the game, like the moments at which the music comes, fantastic. You create, he's trying to create that ambience, mm -hmm. but the story, the gameplay, terrible. You look at the Metacritic, yeah. the Metacritic of that game, based on all his previous games before this, I think had the most user reviews. And even after the release, 6,000, it's sitting at 6.1, 6.2. Uh, yeah, 6 .2. It's, a, it's a game that not everyone is going to like. And, and, and for me, it's I that agree. type of thing but where it's like, okay, look, 
This is Hideo Kojima. This guy is legendary in this space. Everyone's allowed to create and have a, you know, independent portal, but the build around this game is this is his first game from Konami. He's left, he's got his own studio. You know, even if the game had a terrible story, which it does, <laughs> even if it was a bad, but like, you know, you know what? it's fun. Like, you can get into it. Like, dude, this game, gameplay-wise, was very disappointing. I would, uh, I would, uh, I, I don't agree with a lot of what you said, but you know, it's your, it's your category. So that's right. No, no, no. It's not. You're 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 raising, I, this I'm raising a game. No, no, I mean, I, I, we also got game of the year. I mean, I don't okay. have to go crazy. Okay, so, okay. This part so, anyway, so let me wrap it up. So for me, long. Death Stranding was the biggest disappointment because this was a huge AAA game that was meant to come out this year and failed to be a game. It, it fitted a niche. For some people, it worked for them, you know? It like, worked for me. Yeah, <laughs> some people, it worked, but I'm just looking at it like, overall, when I look at all the games, why I didn't put Anthem, which I, I, I talked about first, expectations was right. just that Anthem were like, okay, and then it was like, it bombed and it bombed out and we're like, we expect, mm -hmm. you know? But I honestly thought throughout the episodes we've recorded, I had my criticism of the game. I didn't want them to be true and say, yes, it is a delivery game. But you're like, you know what? I it's, a delivery. Like, it's a game about delivery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking about from when we just saw trailers, I was like, yo, this yeah. looks like a delivery game. But then I'm like, nah, maybe. No, no, I, I was like, this is a, I, I was like thinking, this is a proper, this is post-apocalyptic, post-man simulator. Yeah. Bro. And, and, and those spoilers, is. but like towards the end of the game, when it's like, so you watch like a whole play. Through, I've seen it. every, like this game, the reason why I haven't played it, is because I don't have enough time to play that game. Like yeah. based on what I can that understand game is, you don't want to play it. I'm like, you know what? No. No thanks. No, no. Because I'm not gonna just close off and say, hey, I don't. I always play his games. Mm -hmm. I played all of his games. But this game, this, it's not a game. It game. was just like now that I've known you for a few years, I know a hundred percent. Death Stranding is not a game yeah. for you. Hundred yeah. percent. So for you me, you would I'm, not like this game. So I was like, you know what? You will not like it. The story. And, and, and I know I'm beating a dead horse, but just the story for me, what also makes it disappointing is how creative it is, the potential, and how it, it starts off. And there's like points where you're like, okay, okay, yeah. you know what, stop. This guy got something, but then it just. You're not the first to say that uh, the story kicks off really good, but then mm. kind of. I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk about it. Yeah, I've got some story problems with Death Stranding, but I'll talk about that later. So, yeah. so we, we're going to be here. So, again, like I said, with this category, it's not to say um, it's a guaranteed award. The point is, we bring on the game and we agree on it. So, yeah. my proposal is for me, big disappointment of the year. Death Stranding. For me, it had to be, oh, be Anthem because I played that. So yeah, 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 yeah. It's probably Anthem. And uh, I won't get into Oh, and my, and my friend Pedro, because I really was, I don't know if you guys know about this <laughs> game. Remember how that. excited I was about my yeah. friend Pedro? I don't know if I ever brought it up on the pod last year. I think you guys said really... like Rick and Morty. Some... No, no, it's my not that. It's... The... My friend Pedro is the guy on the skateboard who's got it all over the show. It's like Matrix style side scrolling, and then yeah. there's like uh, the, the there's a banana. I'm already saying, what were you guys yeah. expecting? No, because it, it looks it looks fun in the in what the you watch. Basically, like pulling off. Tricks would be like, yeah, like yeah, 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 and the story as well looked like it could be something hotline Miami kind mm -hmm. of crazy, but man, that game is not. Well. I don't know if Death Stranding was as uh, bad as Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Oh, yeah, there's also good, yeah, yeah, no, but that's so that this is my point. So, so, right so, in the head, I think before he even says anything, I'm gonna throw this out and say, I agree with Michael saying it is the biggest disappointment, and for me, disappointment doesn't mean bad game. I'm not saying Death Stranding was the worst game of 2019. Mm -hmm. True. But the disappointment comes from, and I think these are the points that Michael was trying to get across, expectations, hype, and, you know, hype, not just with regards to the game, but like you say, with the developer, the mm -hmm. single studio. And, like, even looking back, I realized, like, you know, the whole thing of Kojima Productions is also based around Death Stranding. Do you remember what his logo is and what is actually in the game? Yes. Like, this guy started mm -hmm. off... This is the game that I'm going to bring. Yeah. And in typical Kojima faction, very cryptic, we're all like, what is that helmet in the skull? And I mean, yeah. skull in the helmet and so on. So, like, if you take that into account, basically, we've been talking about this trending for what, five years or something? Yeah. Four, four, five years. And then, as we've raised also uh, in previous episodes, the build up in terms of, okay, this is the game you're going to get. Three years in a row of no, basically no gameplay. Despite one E3 spending 15 minutes dedicated to saying we're going to show you gameplay, 
And again, we just see what was it, the chick eating a cockroach, or I don't know what. It's, it's uh, again, very, yeah, very yeah, yeah. They are not called cockroaches. They're actually called uh, uh, as cockroaches. No, no, no. Chirobites. <laughs> Chiro, uh, Chiro, Chiro Chiro they're yeah. called chirobites. So, so like I said, like I don't have a problem with them making a weird and kooky game. Cool, like, that, that's fine. And even like you know, the first one, two trailers, I have no problem with that. But again, like when you say, well, guys, I this, this ties into Sony as well. You guys are now going to have two years no E3. So the last E3 that we had was this year, we're showing you four games. That was Spider Man, 18. we saw 15 minutes. Ghost of Tsushima, of which was a game that we hardly heard anything about. We saw yeah, I think we're, get, we're getting off topic. Let's, 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 let's try to stick. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's no, wrap. Just, just, just the point that I'm saying is expectation, not only in terms of will this game be good, but what is this game yeah. coming into when the game releases, mm-hmm. I think was different from the norm, and therefore. The game coming out, even if, for example, I was to say if it's an eight out of ten, because of that whole lead up, mm-hmm. it like makes you feel like it's a six. Yeah, it it drops it further because it's like, crap, this is what everybody around for the, the record is talking. About. For the record, I think I love the game. <laughs> just so that it's out no, there. But, as but, well. yeah, no, yeah. but you remember, like, we're but saying, like we're saying, your biggest yeah, like biggest disappointment yeah. here in that, um, again, I think for you I, guys, I, not not just that. No, no, no. Like what Alan has said is very, very true. It's not just about like not saying the game is the worst game. As a game, nobody said that. Yeah, as a game, yes, it is bad in a lot of game tropes and so on for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> but no, lots of people, my lots of people. Yeah, yeah. that's why I said it's divisive yeah, yeah. at the start of yeah. the thing. I but said, but my point is that the disappointment is the yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I, yeah. I completely understand. Because if this game fair. came that's out fair. like let's say imagine an indie studio. Or you know, like an up and coming um no CD project. Could be this game. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is that if there wasn't that much build up behind, yeah, yeah, it's you'd be like, you know, I don't know, give them time. You know, the, the this uh, studio. Like, what's that something. game that came? Was it Greedful? Yeah, yeah, like there's spiders. Yeah, yeah. We're like, okay, you know what? I want to make that game. Yeah, that small studio. You know, it's not gonna be. It was like maybe a it's seven. rough. Yeah. yeah, but you, you're like, okay, we appreciate what you're doing. But here it's the opposite, where it's like this level, this tier of a guy. And studio, and then the game is there, so it's just it feels more. Mm-hmm. It's like, for All example, right. next year. This is just my point. If oh, sorry, next year, this year. If Final Fantasy VII isn't like amazing, it's gonna crush you guys as fans because the expectation, the build up, how long you've wanted this, how long you've seen it, and if it comes out as a seven point five, it's gonna be like mm-hmm. it's gonna crush you. It's gonna feel like a five. Exactly. Right? So for me. This is That's right. That's right. Alright guys, welcome back to our second part of the pod, which is our game of the year. We'll be each individually naming our personal game of the year and then we'll come to a consensus. So it's a little bit little bit different from last time where we would have a list of you know 15 to 20 games and whittle it down to a list of 10. I guess this uh method will probably be a bit smoother than mm. the last ones, but the, you guys shouting. You guys let us know what you think about this format or whether you'd like us to do it like the previous years where we'd rank, we'd put a pool of games and then make those selections. So we're trying something different. We'll see how it goes. This is a Dumpster Truck on Fire production. So Patrick, yeah, you can start. What's, what's your game of the year then? Uh, first of all, um, looking back at 2019, um, I didn't purchase a lot of new games because like I said before, I gave a lot of chance to the older games that have uh, developed over time and patched up. And um, since everybody's in the mood of releasing games half-baked, <laughs> usually it takes about six months to a year for it to evolve into the game that the studios envisioned it to be. Mm -hmm. But having said this, um, mentioning a game that I haven't even played yet, I've only watched a couple of hours of gameplay, which is most of it per se, is probably Call Call of Duty Modern Warfare. This is is your selection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you haven't played it? Yeah, I haven't played it. Okay, that's weird, but all right. Mine got the burn. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. No, because um, the reason why I'm also mentioning a game that I haven't played even though I've seen that it's performed very well Mm -hmm. is because I think that right now when you release a solid shooter Mm -hmm. with a very good campaign that looks that well and Mm -hmm. has a multiplayer aspect that even though is not perfect but still comes out to you give the players what they want I think that you should deserve to be at the top 
to return to form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially uh, this um, this motive of developers going towards uh, the online aspect, mm-hmm. online mm-hmm. only, microtransactions, mm-hmm. pay for skins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you to go back to the original formula mm-hmm. for a full priced game with a short and sweet campaign mm-hmm. while on top giving you the multiplayer aspect of solid gunplay. Mm. It only seems logical that Call of Duty has to be there. Nice. So yeah. that's your pick? Yeah. Call and of Duty. Alan? <laughs> I already know. <laughs> Let's just come to me. <laughs> it's obvious. Going off of I'll just let what I uh, <laughs> discussed for my category, the like of you forms. Know, return to forms, I have to say, this isn't even up for discussion. The game of the year is Resident Evil 2. My goodness gracious. I mean... Wow. So who played Resident Evil 2 here? Me, you, and... and Michael. Michael. Yeah. Michael, yeah? Okay. I... I don't understand how they're able to make it feel like the PlayStation 1 games. Like, really feel like the PlayStation 1 games, but with your modern hardware, your modern controls... When you say feel, modern... you mean how the character controls? No. Or you just mean feel of the yeah. game itself? Yeah, I mean, like, you oh. know, like, there's certain things that the PlayStation 1 has to do to kind of make workarounds. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Opening a door has to be a whole cutscene mm-hmm, because mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. how you've got to load. Mm-hmm. But now, you don't need to do that now, but the way that they angle the camera to zoom in, okay, what are you picking? Oh, the, the lock has failed. Yeah. Okay, search the item, flip it to the back, now I've got the key, now I'm going to do this. Those sort of things just made you feel like you were playing a PlayStation 1 game again. Yeah. Which I think is very difficult to do because the times have changed. The expectations have changed. So many things have changed that you take for granted what these games used to feel like. And I just feel like this game nailed it perfectly that it makes me look forward to whatever horrors are going to come in the future. Because it wasn't also just about jump scares. I mean, you know, if you know Mr. X, you don't need me to explain this to you. Yeah, that's about where I stopped playing the game. (laughs) Once I reached Mr. X, I was too freaked out, too much anxiety. I said, I cannot play this game. If a horror game can get you to stop playing, I think that's good. It's doing its its job. It's done its job. Yeah. Yeah. I went on hard, the harder difficulty, and when you run out of bullets and you've got a few undead mutts chasing you, yeah, and you you kind of want to take a break for a week and then come yeah, back, come back to it. <laughs> so it's really doing its job. The graphics were incredible. The models. I mean, me and Michael and I were talking earlier how these things have half the jaw removed and mm-hmm. so on, but it looks really good. Really, that RE really engine is crazy. It's, it's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And for me, I was playing it on PC, bumping up the graphics to the max, and the candle lights and just the whole ambiance of the game was absolutely incredible and. It's just a true return to form. It's made me really want to start playing horror games all over again. And just just amazing. Resident Evil 2. Good. If, if you don't mind getting scared, just, just go out. Buy it now. Okay, there's a few even extra goodies when you finish the mm-hmm. game. A few little extra things you can do. And yeah, just yeah. fantastic game overall. Cool. No. Uh for me. <laughs> You already know for me it's Death Stranding. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say observation. No, no, I, well, no. I, okay, so I had notes prepared because the format was only decided like five minutes before we started. <laughs> it actually wasn't. I had, I know it was. It was I have a whole fun. list of notes right here where I was ready to argue for so many different games. Observation was fifth. Um, you but even clicked print. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I even clicked print like yesterday. I was like, let's go. Um, but for me, yeah, it's it's Death Stranding. Um, it's it's definitely not a perfect game. You know, I think we, we talked about, uh, you brought up some of the issues, even though you haven't played it, like you brought up some of the issues you've seen like from watching gameplay and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's, it's for me, I mean, I spent seven, about 75 hours beating this game, but um, overall it was just such a fantastic, unique experience that I think is extremely, extremely rare to find on this scale. Um, it's, I, I really don't think we're going to get something like this again for a very long time. It's just so unique. The, 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 uh, like you were talking about the delivery mechanic gameplay, uh, for me, it was the exact opposite where it was completely addicting to keep making those deliveries, trying to five-star every location that I got to, which comes with rewards and stuff like that. Um, 
it was it was just such an addictive gameplay loop. You ready up at your whatever base that you're at or location that you're at. You look at your map. You figure out the terrain that you have to go to. You figure out whether there's a mule area where you're going to go through a mule or BT area. BTs are the ghost mules are the addicts to to stealing cargo and stuff like that. And I felt like a mule playing this game because, you know, that's the whole lore behind the mules. Like they've been corrupted by this addiction to stealing cargo and stuff like that. And that was me. Like I just loved making those deliveries. I loved the preparation. I loved figuring out where to put my different bits of cargo to manage my weight. You can, you can set it to automatic if you want. Like you can just load up on what you're meant to carry and your equipment and put it to auto or whatever. But I, it was just really fun, like figuring out where I want to place certain bits of equipment and stuff like that. Um, uh, what was the other thing I want to say? Yeah, like you, you brought up the music is fantastic. I love when you're coming up over a horizon and then this song just lightly comes in and starts playing and then you're traversing this landscape. Like I said, managing your weight and stuff like that, preparing, figuring out, can I take a vehicle over this area or whatever? Should I use a bike? Um, and on top of that, uh, the connection aspect of the game, which Kojima was really talking about pre uh, sorry, he wasn't talking about how the online was going to work so much pre-release, but playing that game, I cannot imagine playing that game without an online connection because it just adds so much to the experience. So for those who don't know, maybe who are watching, like, so when you go into a new area, Basically, you're meant to connect, the whole game is connecting different locations together, right? To get from one area of America to the next. Um, so when you enter a new area, the area is not connected to the chiral network or whatever. So you're going through that area without the help of others, without the signs they've placed, without the bits of equipment they've left for you and that kind of thing. So you have to go through the struggle initial, initially of trying to get through that area. But when... When you get through that hardship, you make the connection at a certain base, and then you just see your map populate with all these different things that users have done in the area and put up for you. It's just so gratifying when you come out and finally you're like, okay, how I'm gonna get this is gonna be this is the thing that it's it's it, it can be annoying as well when you're because it's it's hard getting through certain areas, but then the gratification and you're like, oh my um my speed skeleton is running out of juice. And now that you've connected the area, you see like someone set up a battery just a little bit up ahead, and it's it's really and you're 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 dying, you know what I mean? Like you just have you have no PVC that can help you make your own battery, you're dying, you get to that battery, it's like oh perfect. You're trying to cross a uh, maybe a river you're being chased by mules and you're like god damn it i have no nothing to get across and someone has just perfectly placed a ladder you know what i mean and it's it's really cool and then it works on you as well because every time i was putting something down i was taking the extra care to be like okay this is for me but hmm, will this also be useful so for someone else who's going to come here and stuff then you come back to that location a couple of hours later and you see that bridge or that rappel line that you put down has like 300 likes because you put it in such a good place and many people have got to use it and it's just such a rewarding feeling that is very unique it's got it's journey-esque in certain ways death stranding um and you know the story is i like the story a lot i love the character i love mads mickelson the most cliff um and i really like um uh, Die Hard Man, fantastic performance by Tommy Earl Jenkins. Like that's the that's the quality of the actors and the work they've done in movies. Like fully comes through in this game. And Kojima gives them a lot of nonsensical things to say, and they just completely ride with it, which I love. It's super anime and stuff. Like I really like that. Um, so yeah, for me, it's like Death Stranding. Like it was just such a, a unique game that I don't think I will ever ex experience a game like this again. It's got its problems, especially the end of the story goes, I don't know if any of you have watched Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, like six episodes from finishing, right? Oh fuck, yeah. So so uh, you when you get to the end, watch the original ending and then watch the redone ending. Mm -hmm. Uh, the original ending of Neon Genesis is batshit insane, right? And it's 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 very, very, very weird. And Death Stranding towards like the last hour is kind of like that, which is like an exposition dump, which I was like, ah, you could have found a better way to, 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 to do this. Like you definitely could. But I mean, it doesn't distract from the overall experience for me. And yeah, so for me, it would be Death Stranding. Pretty much, yeah. Not a perfect game as well. Just want to add, uh, didn't really enjoy uh, sh uh, shooting against mules. Like, you can't kill people in Death Stranding because there'll be a void out, right? There's like, yeah. 
Um, so you kind of have to like knock them out with like your bola gun, which wraps them up. Or the Ebola gun. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Ebola gun. And uh, the the shooting is not. Uh, there's also certain specific assault rifle like shooting segments where you have to use like super more powerful weapons. Boss fights were really fun though. The boss fights in the game, the BTs when they transform, I'm sure you saw that in bits of gameplay, like, you know, when you're grabbed by BTs or when you have to fit this, there's a certain boss near the end of the game that is just absolutely huge. It's just big so good. Yeah, the big guy. I love that boss fight. But like shooting the mules and stuff like that, like I, I didn't find that very fun and stuff like that. But overall, yeah, fantastic game for me. I, I absolutely love this game. Yeah. Well, um... For me, um, the game that I think is game of the year for me is purely because, you know, no matter what, I couldn't stop playing this game um, based on the fact that the game was so, so addictive to play. Like, you start playing and it's like, okay, yeah, I'm doing this, but then the game is just so well made. Like, the things that you only get to appreciate the more you play it, you know? Like, you, you know, you're playing a game and then, like, you, like, notice everything that they've just given to you. But the more you spend time with it, the more you're like, oh, I didn't notice I actually took the time to do this. Mm -hmm. And this game I got because I was like, look, um, I have a girlfriend. I was like, let me find a game that we can both play or whatever. She doesn't play games at all. So I was trying to find what Man game. of Medan. Yeah. What game can I Is this the game? Man of Medan? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a real Man game. Medan. It sounded like Man of Medan. So I'm like, let me find a game that like... Even if she's not playing, because like, she'd be pretty bad at playing anyway, but she can enjoy it, you know? Yeah. And I had, I had an idea that this would be good, so let me let me get this game. The story, the 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 puzzles in the game, the way, like, you know, even when you're not doing intense stuff, you're like, okay, you know, let me get around that. And I see it, look at the list, you're like... I know what game it is. What game? Star Wars. The puzzles, amazing. I'm right, right? Gameplay, Star amazing. Wars. Visuals, bro. The visuals in this game... And like the fact that the storytelling isn't like, I want to say it's like top tier, like the best, but you just keep going. And then the small parts they add in, you have an interest in because you're like, okay, where is this going? You know, the way it was made, this, this is just the way it was made. Like they took time not to just say, okay, we're going to have this part of the game. And when you get here, this is going to happen. So many things happen dynamically. And you're like, yo, this is, I can't believe like, this is one of the games where I finished and when I was done finished, I when I was done playing the game, I was like, why is this game done? You know? Let me That's let the me, best feeling. That's the best. And then I'm like, alright, let me play this extra thing. This extra thing. This extra thing. Then I'm like, no, let me see how they made this. Okay, no, let me go look at this. Let me Bro, I have not felt like this in years. Talk to me about the story. Because I've the heard story uh, good, is good the stuff story, the story. The story. Without spoilers, if you can. Okay, so I mean I might as well tell what game I'm talking about. Okay. Resident Evil 2. Oh, okay. yeah. I Resident about Evil 2. Yeah. 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 I was like, I was like yeah. Resident yeah. Evil 2 is an amazing game. Like, I don't like getting scared or whatever. But this is a game that you're not supposed to just say, let me sit by myself and play. Because you'll get scared. Right. That's, that was me playing this just game. Right. This, this game, game you, you have someone. to play with someone. It's yeah. the most amazing thing. Mm. If you go on YouTube right now and watch like scare compilations, people play this game like, you know, like, too deep, it's in the dark, let's go. And that's how I played this game. Yeah. I played with my girlfriend at first, and I got so scared, I'm like, I can't do this, because she isn't helping me, and I'm the one that's walking down these dark tunnels, bro. And the puzzles, dude, the puzzles in this game, the way things are put together, and the crazy thing is, you stop when you just got to this mistake. So you're playing as Claire or as Leon? I started off as Leon. Okay, I started off as Claire, because the OG game, when I was eight years old, I played by myself as Claire. I had this from Blockbusters. Mm -hmm. Scared the life out of me. <laughs> So I played as Claire, and it's like, we're taking turns, yeah? Mm -hmm. So he will go through the section, it's now my section. And you're like, okay, I've done this, I've done that. Finally routed the water back here, done this. Yeah, the puzzles are cool. Yeah. Then this guy picks up a chopper. I'm like, who? There's no cutscene. Who is this thing? <laughs> There's no, like, you know, in the original game. Let me tell you what happened in the original game. The original game, there was a cutscene in which they drop something. In, he's in like a, a chamber. Mr. Mr. X? Yeah. Okay. So you're like, oh, something has happened. <laughs> something has happened, right? Yeah. He just burst. Well, I don't know if it's different Bro, depending on who you're playing Let me tell as. you when you're playing as Claire. He just burst through the... No. Uh, when, how does Mr. X pop up again? For Claire. <laughs> let me tell you how it pops Maybe up. Let's not say it for those that... No, no okay. But okay, I mean, it's, it's spoilers. For Claire, there's, there's no, no cutscene or whatever. Leon you are, 
But Leon, there's no cutscene. No, but Leon, you're doing something. You're talking to someone. No, Leon oh, no. pops. Uh, the, no, Mr. X comes. I'm about? saying when Mr. <laughs> X comes. We're gonna explain the game now. Yeah. <laughs> there's a cutscene where you see there is something. There's something out and about. What the hell is that? Okay. But the first time that you see it is like how you say it's a gameplay. It's a gameplay. Literally game just yeah, just done a puzzle. Right. Okay, so I can go back to the wait. I must have missed wait, that. What, 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 yeah. what the fuck is that? that? Let me tell you how when you're playing as Claire, you're doing a whole set piece. You're fixing because remember the chopper goes. In yes, the that's what I'm saying. Then, the then when you're yeah. walking, he just picks up. The chopper. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I stopped and yeah. looked at him and he looked at me <laughs> and I looked at him and then Jay, Jay was like, and I'm. Like, <laughs> <laughs> then he starts walking, I'm, and you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, yeah. you've never seen anything like this thing in the game. Mm. So, should I talk to him? Should I? No, 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 no. He's too me. Mean, you already know I just right. said, hey, I mean, just squats. Like, imagine the game has made you do something without saying, at heads up, this is, uh uh. The sound of those footsteps. The guy is a bit too dapper. Why, why is he wearing? Yeah, a, why is he wearing a fedora? Yeah, 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 why is he wearing a goddamn fedora? I'm running. Right. It's like, yeah, 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 that yeah, game yeah. was like, yo, like you're putting me through. Like, like the best thing was when you pass the pipe to your friend, whoever you're playing with, and then now you get to properly enjoy the game and watch them go through like BP and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like struggling through, like, oh, we need to get this puzzle, we need to get this weapon. But the guns, like when you get the bigger guns, I didn't when get you. That. Ooh, when you're blowing brains, how's the gunplay? Oh, dude, it's it's, it's good, and the, the the cool thing is like you have the aiming, like you have to properly aim for the head. No aim yeah. assist. No aim assist. No aim assist. And on top of that, a shot to the head in Resi doesn't mean the zombie yeah. goes down. Uh, Some of them might. Sometimes you get a one shot mm. when you're lucky. You know what I mean. But most of the time, you have to put like two, three bullets. I have you noticed? And the thing is, they stagger, right? Yeah, the yeah, zombies yeah. like because you're aiming, and the zombies like proper stagger because it's such a it's a bit of a slow. Uh. And then like you bang and you completely miss because the guy just took a step and shuffled up. And, and then when you see a few bullets, yeah. them falling to my feet thinking they're about to grab me, not realizing they've just died. <laughs> like you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they even down and they're not the coming. You're like, let me make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah one yeah. more. The way the lighting is at certain points, oh. when you look at some of the things, the zombies and so on, and you see the detail, it's, yeah, it's gruesome it's weird, because right? when you shoot it, if you shoot it in the face, you you see the chunks. Face, that you see the off. chunks of meat and, coming and out. And I'm yeah. someone that always says, "Yo, man, I want to go in games because I want to feel like I'm doing something." There were moments that game was like, you know what? That's <laughs> a lot. Uh -uh. Like that's that's too, too much. much. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> this is too much. And then the further on you get, and the cool thing is like the further on you get, there's different set pieces that happen when they. They take you away from like, you know, trying to solve puzzles to like more of a corridor like experience. That's the parts I like. Yeah. I like the corridor. Later on, yeah, and later on. Yeah, okay, okay, fair, fair, fair. Then fair. you now, like you're trying to get through the puzzles and so on. So for me, this game, not just because it's a remake, but like it was just so well done. It almost works as, it almost feels like it works as just a new game. Yeah, that's pretend new Resident game. Evil never, never existed. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, like you and, could just make And this what song, I was talking yeah. about when I was saying, when I wanted to see how it works is all the times you see Mr. X, so anytime, because I didn't, I don't know if there any other set pieces after, not before him, but the later on, the second set, set pieces. Two set pieces. Yeah. yeah. You notice when those set pieces happen, it's not like, you know, you're playing and you're going to like short movie mode. Mm -hmm. He literally walks into place. Like if you, they, they show you the level. Like, this is the level, outside is black. He will appear here, start walking, yeah. look, get into position, and wait. Like, the animation is all in real time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, this is dope. Like, for me, this game, absolutely amazing. I am so hyped. I was just as scared as you guys. When I started playing it, I was like, mm. Would you have gone past, Mr. if you were playing it alone, would you have finished I it? I would not have finished that game. So you're like me, then. Because I, 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 can, I can't finish so it. So it's that type of But game. I want to go, now that we're, we've talked about it, I just want to go home and continue you play with trying That's it. how it works. You know what I mean? Like, you two I, it's, been, it's been on my mind, like, ever since I stopped. I've always wanted to go back. Yeah. But I think I just need to, like, play it with, like I was saying to Alan before, volume on low. Yeah. Windows, uh, curtains wide open, China, tons of yeah. sunlight, yeah. Yeah. and a podcast on the side, and then, you know what I mean, and yeah. then play the goddamn or, game. Or play, play with someone else, play with Piki. Yeah. 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 You know, the experience is really fun because it's that type of thing where, like, bruh, I've now... Okay, so, no spoilers, <laughs> this is an, an exact situation that happened, yeah? I had been playing, so we were basically just saying, okay, if I play some amount of time, you play. We were timing it. But it's like, uh, you know, I've done enough stuff, but it's, you know, it's your turn. Mm -hmm. So he, he didn't want to play. Jay is any excuse not to play. So, bro, I had done the most. I had done everything. 
And then I saw mistakes. And so I ran for my life. And bro, you're running and yet he's he's chasing you. Mm-hmm. And then now you're scared, like I might bump into something else. Yeah, yeah. You hear those goddamn boots yeah. on the ground. Yeah, man. It's terrifying. Pushing. So mm-hmm. I ran all the way to this one room and he was searching. So mm-hmm. bro, he searches the rooms. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're hiding here, you're scaring him, opening doors. Good job. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, man. I can't. It's, it's terrifying. It's absolutely and, and, terrifying. And so I'm like, this one, this one, this one, this one. <laughs> then I got down, I'm like, anyway, bro, I've got to the same space. It's your turn. He says, no, yes. play at two checkpoints. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so now we play two checkpoints. This wasn't a rule before. So what I did, I ran past this guy, ran all the way back to the first checkpoint where no doors are locked. Mm-hmm. And I saved that I had it in the fact. I said, now you play. Now you play. Bro, and it's, it's hilarious because, like, I, I think you should try it. Mm. Try it. For me, Everybody was this year, this year, so I have played, I have played hella games, specifically because of Game of the Year and so on. I've played all these games. I said, let me at least put time in. Let me at least, you know, see, see what, what it's about. Resident Evil 2, you owe it yourself to try it. Mm. I don't expect you to play by yourself because I wouldn't do that. It's tough. I wouldn't do it. I used to recommend play with fun with a friend. You will laugh. Yeah. Tell your neighbor that they can pop in. Pop in. Yeah. Come it's check more, on me. It's more fun than scary when there's two because you're because you yeah. are like, damn, this guy is now walking into the sewer. You're like, okay. <laughs> and then you know, so it's for me it's, when you turn a corner like like yeah. okay. And then you get mad because if you're playing together, you get mad because you're like, bro, why are you wasting all those bullets? You know how hard it is to get this out. Yeah, yeah. Don't use the shotgun, you use the pistol. Yeah. You know? And the, the, they're not so stingy with like with ammo? Yeah, like you, you just have to know how to not miss, let me just say. <laughs> Can and I throw this out there, which is something I have to bring up? What Resident Evil 2 Remake has done that I've not seen in a very long time is the zombies stay. Oh yeah. You shoot that thing, that thing could have been laying on the floor for six hours. Mm-hmm. You know that thing is dead. Well, for some reason, when you walk into that room this time, He's, You're yeah. seeing it crawling. Mm-hmm. Now, if you think of some older Resident Evil games and even some newer horror games, when you legit kill something, it'll bubble and fizzle out. Yeah, it will yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. It you goes are into constantly the ether. left with a level of unease in this game. With, with no loading. Mm. With, <laughs> with no loading. Because Skyrim did stuff like that, but that would load. Like, you'd load up a whole area, then all the bodies fought to the ground. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, here, it's like. This is real time. Yeah. You have shot it helps the that the levels in the face small, like six yeah. times. And they're all interconnected. interconnected yeah. 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 So for me, hey, long story short, my game of the year has Resident Evil. So I think uh, in terms of picking number one, I think I, I would say it's probably Resident Evil 2, right? I mean, I don't see an yeah, like I guess because COD, like I don't think of yeah. COD, Death Stranding. I know you. Be, I mean, I'm the only one who really cares that much about I it. Do but I do I, I, I'm fine point. with Resident Evil. I do want to bring up a point that's actually brought up though. Mm. Which is something that I've heard before and I completely agree. And this goes in line again with the disappointment of uh, Death Stranding. I think the game wasn't marketed to say what the game is. Mm. I agree with you in saying that the strongest feature that the game has is the fact that it's trying to give you a sense of isolation. You've got this huge area, no music, guys trying to steal your packages. You sometimes find a little city in the distance and the music plays. It creates this very melancholic sense of loneliness. But then sometimes you'll save, you'll wake up the next day and you'll find, like you're saying, an oil point has been put for you to charge your car, an electric point, a rope has been set up at the edge of a waterfall and so on. I do agree that I think that that is the strongest point of Death Stranding. But we knew nothing about that. By the time the online the stuff was more, he kept that like really. He should have talked about the online That's stuff. That's exactly my point. Stuff is I like, feel like you never, never play this game offline if you can. You <laughs> is my well, only Patrick will probably play it. Do not yeah. play this game offline. Yeah, yeah. Play See, it online because even when he told us that this game is going to be about connection, yeah, connection. All of us are having our ideas what it could be. Is it going to be like a Dark Souls type situation? Yeah, is somebody yeah, yeah, going to be yeah. running in Which and out? It's not even that. Yeah, it is not that at all. Yeah. Yeah. So literally, it's a weird thing, thing, yeah. Expecting some level of a Metal Gear game, it's shooting, dead, yeah, it's movement, not, yeah, yeah, and so yeah, yeah, that not, is yeah. not the point of the, the game. game yeah. Yeah. So but the good thing, but the good thing on the other side again is for me the actual, like I was saying, the loop of delivery for me was fun. <laughs> like yeah, I, 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 I enjoy saying. that. Like that's I completely enjoy delivering packages and stuff. I think what the game it was can trying be to do, but it's fine. Minus the story, I agree with the story. 
the story was for me not good. Mm-hmm. But the other aspects of what I was trying to do, it did get right. But because you are purchasing this game not knowing what this game is like, expecting some level of typical Hideo Kojima shooting, weapon development and so on, that is not the point of the game. You have those half of the individuals or whatever percentage that are now getting upset. And are saying, not this game is rubbish because of this, because of that, because of that. It's like saying you're going to buy an action RPG game and be surprised it's a JRPG and then you're going to submit yeah. it because of that. Even they will not yeah. tell you what the game is. Even play, yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just add to that. Like, I also just in the overall uh, scheme of things don't believe that the biggest problem people have is just because you're doing something. Because if you look at some of the most played games now, the most the things people love, including myself, is nice gameplay moves. It's just how deep you can make them. You look at a game like Minecraft, for example. Mm-hmm. People play that. They're literally doing a loop. It's, it's just like, yeah. Over. And for me, the idea of what Death Stranding's loop is, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. It's just that people don't like that. There's the depth that it has. But it, I think, it, I think the, depth, because, the depth comes from the... Because you are given a shitload of equipment and also then, the connection yes, side the, of and it that's what I'm and that's the cool. building roads and all this other stuff. Like... It's 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 a very uh, it's got a lot of systems. It's a very layered game. Yes, actually, when you mean, actually play it yourself. I'm just saying to make yeah. the gameplay look more exciting. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Some people wanted more depth in the sense that it's not to say that it's an action maybe. Yeah, yeah. So a balance between you know the the, the 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 world itself because I think the world is very well created and everything. And it's just I think the biggest problem people feel is that those invisible walls stop them from really expressing what they want to do. Because I've seen some cool structures. Some people made this huge bridge mm-hmm. in the game and stuff. And you know, like, if there was more of an emphasis, like, you know what, let's have our story or whatever, but let's have this game work that when you're done with the game, you really want to try to do these things. There might be certain areas where you couldn't access by yourself. But you needed to get through such a part. You know what I mean? Like, not necessarily making a complete open world RPG type thing, but just to take off some of the... I think the, the, the invisible walls, I think that's the best way I can put it. A lot of the problems people have is the visible walls yeah. with that game. Alright, so just so we don't get stuck on Death Stranding mm-hmm. forever, we're all in agreement, I think, that Resident then Evil. it's probably Resident, Resident Evil 2, right? Resident Evil 2. Alright, that's the easiest game the we've control. ever oh, done. Yes. Yeah. Well done to you, Capcom. You made oh, a hard game great, yeah. Yeah. that made me Capcom. shit myself. Capcom. Oh, I would like to say, honorable mentions for myself, mm-hmm. Control. Okay. I don't know who else has played Control. Literally just played that. Fantastic. Two hours and I'm yeah. Lying. Control is a fantastic it's game. It's irritating me, I kind of like. It's a bit too much of, like, too much. It's, it's got some problems. <laughs> but I, I think Control for me is, like, my second favorite game. Uh, Metro Exodus, shout out to Metro. Uh, shout out to Days Gone. And you know me, I gotta get my PSVR, PSVR in there. Blood and Truth, Studio London. I loved it. You fully realized the London Heist demo from PSVR Worlds. I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah. That was. Star Wars. I haven't played it yet, but we. Oh, Snoop, who's played Star Wars here? I've played it. Mm. I'm putting work, bro. Mm. The only reason I didn't play Star Wars because I was playing Death Stranding at the <laughs> time, and then when I was gonna buy it, it was like back to sixty pounds or whatever. So I was like, ah, Sekiro. And Sekiro, oh, I don't know. Right. Get you get I don't get play you. from games, so yeah. don't even bother with me. <laughs> yeah. So g- congrats to Resident Evil Two. Yay. You made everyone in, in control except Patrick shit their pants. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't like shitting my pants. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that is our game of the year. You guys, let us know what you think is your... Let us know what your own game of the year is in the comments below. Let us know if you think it should have been something else. Um, and yeah, just, just let us know your thoughts on what you thought of this. Um, yeah, so good episode, I think, guys. Yeah. It's good to be back. Yep. New yep. Year. A lot of stuff coming up. This year, um, this year, this year, this year. I guess we'll, we'll sign off here. Uh, Patrick, anything else you want to add? No, it's just uh, good to be back. I'm happy. Michael? Yeah, I'm very happy to be back, man. It's, um, it's been a bit of a break. 2019 was not as active as we wanted it to be. Mm. But, you know, hey, things have been happening. And, you know, we need to move with the times. And I think we're doing that right now. Yeah. And we're back. Alan? Yeah, man. Good to be back. Very excited. Uh, also, just want to give a shout out to you guys. Tune in for our next episode. Where we're going to look forward to what's coming in 2020. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to have a little episode. It's going to be a good year. Our next episode will be a yeah, good delay. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah, yeah. expectations and predictions in our next episode. So, yeah, make sure you give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Give it a dislike if you didn't. Ah, uh, don't dislike. Just, just leave us. I know. If you didn't like it, it's fine. That's not a problem. You can follow me on Twitter, Ole underscore Gunner, PKUR. 
Planto underscore Kafu. Michael? TSY Baby Official. And Alan? Nada. Oh yeah, you're not on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was gonna um, be like, how do you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, guys, thanks so much for tuning into Game of the Year 2019. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Yeah.